Hey guys, it's MJ the Student at Tree, and in this video, we're going to be talking about subject CT2, uh, chapter 5, which is all about um, the use of derivatives. Now, I have made um, a few videos already on derivatives, uh, specifically forwards and futures, and that's under my CA1 playlist, so go find it there for a more comprehensive um, view on what derivatives are and all that type of stuff. So what I'm gonna do, bearing in mind that we have that video, I'm gonna keep this video very short and just talk about the general features, but like I said, go check out that other video. I will put a link in the description. Without further ado, let's jump into it. I'm gonna talk about uh, a forward, a future, an option, and a swap, and then I'm gonna talk about the use of derivatives with uh, regards to risk management and how it can reduce the cost of borrowing. But let's go straight into it. So a forward contract, um, or let's actually maybe take a little step back. How these derivatives came into existence was with farmers. So farmers is one of the, the areas where futures and forwards um, started. The idea was that a farmer comes and he plants his crop, and he has to wait um, a whole year or a whole season before he can harvest those crop and take it to market. Now, when he takes it to market, he doesn't really know what the price is going to be. So if he's planting apples or wheat or something like that, the price could be 10 rand for wheat, or it could be 20 rand for wheat, or it could be 5 rand for wheat. And because of this uncertainty, the farm is in a little bit of a problem. Because let's say there is a 50% chance that the price of wheat could be 10 rand, and there's a 50% chance that the price of wheat could be 5 rand. So it's either 10 rand or it's 5 rand. And the farmer looks at his, um, looks at his books, and he sees, oh my gosh, it costs 6 rand um, per, per wheat uh, in order to grow, you know, the cost of labor, the tractors, the irrigation, all that. He, he sees that his costs are six rand. And this gives him a little bit of a problem because this means that there's a 50% chance that the wheat will be less than what it took to make it and he will therefore be bankrupt in the sense that he won't have enough money to cover all of his costs. And there's also a 50% chance that he gets it for 10 rand and he becomes incredibly wealthy. So he's in this predicament, he doesn't like this uncertainty. When all of a sudden, a financial genius comes up to him and he says to the farmer, he says, listen here, 50% um, chance it's gonna be 10 rand and there's a 50% chance it's gonna be five rand. This means the expected cost is gonna be seven rand and 50 cents. But all you need to do is sell your wheat at a price for six rand or more in order to make a profit. I will therefore buy your wheat at a guaranteed price of seven rand. So the farmer looks at this and he's like, well, this is actually a good deal. I'm now reducing my risk and I'm locking in a price at seven rand, which means the cost of my wheat is six rand. I'm guaranteed a profit of one rand. And this is good because it means next year I can plant again for six rand, but I will have made one rand profit per chunk of wheat. The financial genius, he's also quite happy because he knows statistically he's making 50 cents on this deal. Something that has an expected value of 7.5 uh, rand and he's getting it for seven rand. So in this case, both parties are happy. And what happens is, if the market um, is at five rand at the end of the year, the financial genius loses out on two rand per wheat, but there's also that 50% chance that it could have been 10 rand and he could have made three rand um, on the wheat. And if he does this every single year, year on year out, he, can, he knows that he's gonna make profit in the long term. Now what we do is we call this thing a forward contract. And the word forward is because we're making a deal in the future. Or well, it's forward, it's, you know, it's not now, we're gonna be doing it later. You, know, you need to fast forward 
to that date. So a forward contract is a contract to trade an asset at a fixed price at a fixed date in the future. So in our example, the fixed price was 7 Rand and the asset was wheat and the fixed date is the following year. Now, what the farmer could do or what the financial genius can do is they can create something called a future contract. Now, a future contract is different to a forward contract in the sense that a future contract is a standardized, marketable contract to trade an asset at a fixed price at a fixed date in the future. So what this means is a forward contract is very customizable. It's between the, the farmer and it's between the financial genius and they could make it for any quantity amount on any certain asset, whether it be wheat, apples, oranges or something like that. The future contract standardizes a few of these parameters and the reason for doing so is it makes it much more marketable and you can now open up an exchange and there's a lot of benefits to this. You lose out on some of the customability of it, but you're making up for it in marketability. There's a whole secondary market in which you can trade these assets. And now a financial future is a contract that is based on an underlying financial instrument rather than a physical commodity. So the financial genius can take the same ideology and instead of approaching farmers, can approach banks and say, let's create a, f a financial future on interest rate payments or whatever financial instrument they want to lock in at a future date. Now, there's something else I want to talk about and that is an option. Well, I don't know, should, let, me, let me actually end this video here on the, the forward and the future and we'll make another video on the option. Otherwise, otherwise these videos are going to be way too long. So yeah, this is already at seven minutes. So I'm going to end it here and we're going to continue chapter five in another video. So subscribe for that, but it should be posted up at around the same time.